Hello students. So in today's class we are going to learn about electronic configuration. So the distribution of electrons into orbitals of an atom is called its electronic configuration. So the how the electronic configuration is present in periods and in groups we are going to deal with each and everything in a detailed manner. So first we are going to deal about periods. So what do you mean by periods in, uh, in an uh, long form of periodic table children so the horizontal rows the horizontal rows are called periods or series so in periods the number of elements in each period is twice the number of atomic orbitals so the number of elements in each period is twice the number of atomic orbitals available in the energy level that is being filled so the period number corresponds to the sh uh, shell number so in first period okay the electronic configuration will be 1s 1 to 2 why i wrote 1 to 2 because in s orbital either one or two electrons may present for example for hydrogen what is the electronic configuration children 1s1 because its atomic number is 1 for helium it is 1s2 so the first period starts with hydrogen and ends with helium and the second period okay and the second period the electronic configuration is ns122 np126 so the uh, so here the element starts from lithium that is 2s orbital after again the boron so from boron the electron the differentiating electron enters into 2p orbital so from lithium to neon the uh, elements are present and their electronic configuration is 2s122 as it is second period it indicates the number of the uh, uh, period number also so look at here 2 third period means 3 fourth period means 4 like that so 2s 122 2p 126 so next comes to third period starts with sodium okay with the differentiating electron enters into 3s orbital that is m shell successive filling of 3s and 3p subshells gives the rise to the third period of eight elements from sodium to organ so here the third period the electronic configuration is 3s 122 uh, 3p 126 the element starts from sodium and ends with organ next fourth period the 4s orbital okay 4s uh, fourth period the fourth orbital so 4s 122 3d 1210 4p 126 so why i wrote 3d children because we have already learned that molars diagram according to that diagram we have to follow in which in which shell the electron is going to be filled first so here the fourth period starts from potassium that is atomic number is 19 okay with filling up to 4s n shell and filling of 4s is the complete with calcium completes with calcium uh, next before 4p orbitals filling up of uh, 3d orbital m shell becomes uh, it is favorable isn't it so 10 elements from scandium to zinc are filled with a differentiating electron in 3d subshell the period ends with krypton which uh, with the filling up of a 3p orbital so therefore it are having 18 elements in the fourth period next comes to fifth period fifth period begins with a rubidium filling up to 5s orbital okay 5s 122 4d 110 5p 126 so here 4d subshell is filled starting at yttrium and up to cadmium the period ends at xenon with the filling up of 5p orbital thus the fifth period also has 80 elements next comes to sixth period the sixth period starts with ccm yes starts with ccm and electronic configuration is 6s 122 4f 1214 5d 1210 6p 126 so this sixth period has 32 elements and the electrons are filled successively in 6s 4f 5d and 6p orbitals so filling up to 4f orbital begins with uh, cerium and ends with and set luti, uh, luti, lithium okay to give 4f series so also called a lanthanide series so lanthanide series are present at sixth period so there are 32 elements in sixth period which is called the longest period and next comes to seventh period that is the differentiating electron enters into 7s 122 5 5f 1214 6d 1210 7p 126 isn't it 
this period is incomplete and is expected to end at the element with the atomic number 118 and an octium okay so filling up of 5f orbital after actinum gives 5f series also called actinide series so this is how in periods uh, the electronic configuration is present so in first orbit sorry first period 1s 122 in the second period 1 uh, 2s 122 2p 126 third period 3s 122 3p 126 fourth period 4s 122 5d 1210 4p 126 in fifth period 5s 122 4d 1210 5p 126 and in sixth period 6s 122 4f 1214 5d 1210 6p 126 and 7th period 7s 122 5f 1214 60 1210 7p 126 so now we are going to move to the groups so the elements present in the same group have similar electronic configuration and have same number of electrons in their outermost shell so the group number itself indicates the valency electron so how many valency electrons are present in a group that group, ne group number itself gives the uh, hint that how many valency electrons are present so first a group okay first a group group means the vertical columns are called groups or families in a uh, first a group the elements of group one are, co are also called alkali metals have only one electron in their outermost shell so that is why it is ns1 next comes to 2a 2a group second group okay second group it is ns2 which are known as alkaline earth metals so here the metals have two electrons in their outermost shell of the each of the atom so the element the metals which are present in this 2a group have only two electrons in their outermost shell that is why uh, they are having electronic configuration ns2 next comes to third group okay 3a group that is ns2 np1 which is also known as boron family why it is called boron family the starting element of this group is boron so that is why it is called boron family so the atoms of the elements of group 3a 3a or group 13 have three electrons in their outermost shell so the general electronic configuration is ns2 np1 so similarly the group 4a also 4a or group 14 elements have general electronic configuration that is ns2 np2 sorry not np2 it is yes ns2 np2 right only next fifth a group elements ns2 np3 so in outermost shell how many electrons are present 2 plus 3 total 5 so that means they the these elements belongs to fifth a group elements they are also known as nicogens and children and next comes to sixth a group element that is ns2 np4 they are also known as charcogens seventh a group element that is ns2 np5 they are also known as halogens and eighth a group elements which are also known as inert gases why they are known as inert gases because the outermost electronic configuration is ns2 np6 which are completely filled so when an element are completely filled then they are uh, act as inert gases they are nothing but helium neon krypton xenon radon helium neon organ krypton xenon and radon so these all are inert gases next comes to classification of elements into blocks so based on the entry of differentiating electron into subshell elements are classified into four blocks so they are nothing but s block p block d block and f block so here four types of blocks they are called s p d f blocks so s block is present at left side p block is present at right side okay d block is present at the middle and f block is present at the bottom of the long form of periodic table so now we are going to talk about s block element so the differentiating electron enters into the outermost or ns subshell are called as s block elements so the differentiating electron the last electron is going to be present at ns orbital so s okay when an element enters into s subshell they belongs to s block okay that is why they are known as s block elements so s block elements can accommodate only two electrons because in s block only one 
subshell is present that which can accommodate only two electrons. So, in a S block we are having two types of groups. Uh, we already discussed that is 1A group, 2A group. 1A group are known as alkali metals, the electronic configuration is NS1. And 2A group elements, they are called as alkaline earth metals. Okay, alkali earth metals or alkaline earth metals where the electronic configuration is NS2. So, the general valency shell configuration. What the general valency shell, uh, shell configuration we are going to get children? NS1 to 2. Isn't it? Either the electron may be 1 or 2. So, that is why NS1 to 2. So, the elements occupies at the left hand side of the periodic table. So, where they are present? At left hand side. So, if we see their characteristics, they these are all soft metals. So, these exhibit a low melting and boiling point. So, the S block elements are soft metals. They exhibit or they have low melting and boiling point. So, as these all are metals, they are good conductors of heat and electricity. Isn't it? All metals are good conductors of heat. So, when you heat in any metal, the heat will be transformed from one particle to the another due to their vibration and the electricity also. Isn't it? The flow of electrons also can be seen. So, these are good conductors of for heat and electricity. These are good. So, these are good reducing agents also because these elements have more negative SRP. SRP means standard reducing potential. Standard reducing potential. We are going to discuss each and everything in further class. Okay. These elements form ionic compounds. So, ionic compounds. Why? Because they will be having excess electron. So, this element can donate the electron. Okay. And uh, other side, one element has to accept electron. So, that is why uh, they can easily form ions. So, they form ionic compounds. Next, oxides of these elements. For example, uh, sodium oxide, potassium oxide, these oxides are all are basic in nature. They all are basic in nature. So, these elements give different colors when they are present in flame. So, these elements give different colors in flame. So, next we move to the P block elements. So, P block element the differentiating electron enters into the outermost or NP subshell are called P block elements. So, this one P block elements. So, P subshell can accommodate only 6 electrons. Why? Because P subshell has uh, it can accommodate only 6 electrons. So, P block contains 6 groups. Okay. And these are uh, nothing but from here 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A and 8A. So, general valency shell configuration will be NS2, NS2, NP1 to 6. And central end. So, NS2, NP1 to 6. So, this all uh, this uh, elements occupies at the right side of the periodic table. Where they are present at right side of the periodic table. So, if we see their characteristics, all non-metals, metalloids and a few numbers of metals are present. That means, P block element contains non-metals, metalloids and few metals. So, these are all oxidizing agent. These all are good oxidizing agent. Whereas, S block elements are reducing agents and P block elements are oxidizing agents. So, these elements form covalent compounds. By sharing of electron, they form covalent compounds. So, this reducing agent, oxidizing agent, covalent compounds, ionic compounds we are going to deal in the next lesson that is chemical bond. So, no need to worry about it. Next, oxides of these elements are mostly acidic in nature. Whereas, S block basic in nature and P block oxides are uh, acidic in nature. So, these elements exhibit variable oxidation state. These elements exhibit variable oxidation state. Next comes to D block elements. So, this is about D block element. So, the differentiating electron enters into penultimate or N minus 1 D subshell or called D block elements. So, look at here children. So, the differentiating electron enters into penultimate or N minus 1 D subshell. So, what do you mean by N children? The last orbit. N minus 1 means. So, this is the nucleus and these are the orbits. This is the N. This one is N minus 1 inner orbit. So, which is called penultimate shell. Outermost shell is ultimate and inner shell, uh, inner shell is penultimate and innermost shell is anti-penultimate shell. 
So, the differentiating electron enters, in, enters in, uh, into penultimate or n minus 1 d subshell are called d block elements. So, d block means they can accommodate up to 10 electrons. So, it contains 10 groups, is not it? So, they contain 10 groups, they are nothing but 3 b, 4 b, 5 b, 6 b, 7 b, 8 b. So, 8, uh, 8. Okay, it contains 3 groups and 1 b and 2 b. So, the general electronic configuration will be here n minus 1 d. So, in d means 10 electrons are present. So, 1, 2, 10. Next, n s 1 or 2, either 1 or 2. So, the general electronic configuration of d block elements is n minus 1 d 1 to 10, n s 1 or 2. So, these elements are split into 4 series that is 3 d, 4 d, 5 d, 6 d and they are also called incomplete. Understand the 6 d series is incomplete and has only 8 electrons, is not it? So, here the d block is uh, the d block elements are present in between s and p block. So, here uh, the elements are located in the middle in between s block and p block they have the properties of intermediate of those of the s block and p block. So, s block calls metals p block means they contain metals, non metals and metalloids is not it. So, d means they are present between as they are present in between these two some of the elements have properties of s block some of the elements have the properties of p block. So, now we if we see the characteristics all this uh, these are metals and having high melting and boiling point all metals are electro positive and are metals all they are electro positive and are metals. So, they are good conductors for heat and electricity. So, these elements ok these element compounds used as catalyst what do you mean by catalyst children catalyst is a substance which can increase the rate of reaction without undergoing any chemical change for example any reaction is taking place ok in a laboratory or in an industrial process we are doing some uh, uh, preparation or uh, some uh, chemical process. So, there the reaction is very slow at that time what we will do we cannot wait for so much of time is not it. So, at that time we will add some catalyst. So, so, catalyst what we will do it will increase the rate of reaction without undergoing any chemical change. So, after the reaction again we can get back the catalyst. So, some examples are there here. So, in Haber's process, in Haber's process in the preparation of ammonia. So, Haber process preparation of ammonia the catalyst are iron. The catalyst is iron and the promoter is uh, molybdenum. So, MO which increase the rate of reaction. Next comes to hydrogenation of oils. In hydrogenation of oils nickel will act as a catalyst and in contact process for V2O5 is not it. So, and in the preparation of sulfuric acid also by the contact process V2O5 vanadium pentoxide is used as a catalyst or platinized asbestos. This is also used as a catalyst. Next these ion shows color due to DD electronic configuration. So, DD electronic configuration because of this they show different colors and they form alloys, they form alloys and intermediate compounds. Alloys, alloys means we can mix uh, some of the elements for example, 2, 3 metals can be mixed and can give some good strength and more capability of uh, for resistance ok more capable resistance they can get. So, they are called alloys and intermediate compounds means some are metal some are non metal they are mixed to given new compound. So, this is about d block element next comes to f block element. So, in f block element the differentiating electron enters into anti penultimate shell anti penultimate shell. So, they contains 14 groups so, they contains 14 groups 4 f series this are first one is 4 f series which are called the lanthanides that is 6th period third group and 5 f series which are known as actinide that is 7th period third group. The general valency shell ok configuration is n minus 2 f as they are belongs to f block 
वन टू फोर्टी एन माइनस वन डी वन माइनस डी जीरो और वन एंड एन एस टू सो दिस इज अ जनरल एलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन फॉर एफ ब्लॉक एन माइनस टू एफ वन टू फोर्टीन एन माइनस वन डी इधर जीरो और वन एंड एन एस टू so look at here children so these elements are arranged at the bottom of the periodic table lanthanides are called rare metals and actinides are called synthetic or man made so if we see their characteristics these element the elements which are present in f block are hard metals so they have high melting and boiling point common oxidation state is plus 3 this ions exhibit color and paramagnetic in nature so these elements form alloys and uh, interstitial and complex compounds so this is about s block p block d block and f block so in the next class we are going to deal about periodic trends in uh, properties of elements so types of element based on their properties we are going to deal in the next class thank you children